Hello children how are you all hope you have seen our first chapter the living world of plants so now we will have the continuation of part 1 so in our previous class we have seen the parts of plant types of root and their functions so in this class we are going to continue with the shoot system so what is a shoot system consist of where do you see a shoot system in a plant so this shoot system is the aerial part of a plant they are the aerial part of a plant what do you mean by aerial part of a plant the part which is seen above the soil is called as a aerial part of a plant are you clear now this uh, shoot system it has a main axis called the stem so what is the main axis of the shoot system it is the stem so from stem only what arises leaves branch fruit flowers etc arises so these are the parts of shoot system are you clear so what are the parts of a shoot system stem leaf flowers branches and fruits are you clear children now the shoot system consists of nodes what are these nodes nodes are the part of the stem where a leaf arises so it is a part of the leaf arises where the leaf arises that particular part is called as a node are you clear next is internode so the place between two successive nodes the space between two successive node is called as a internode are you clear children next we are going to see about the functions of stem so what is the function of stem it gives support to the branches leaves flowers and fruit so it helps in supporting the complete aerial part next it helps in the transportation of water and minerals to aerial part of the plant so transport of water and minerals so where does the where does the stem get water and minerals from the root so root absorbs the water and minerals from the root the stem transports water and mineral to the aerial part are you clear children next is transport so what does it transport it transports the food materials which are prepared from the leaf so what is the type of food materials which are prepared by the leaf it is the process by the process of photosynthesis starch will be produced so the starch from the leaf is transported to all the parts of a plant so the leaf, uh, stem it helps in transporting water and minerals and the food prepared by the leaves are you clear next is it helps in storing the food materials so what are the food materials which are prepared by the plant it is stored in the stem are you clear so these are the functions of a stem next we'll move on to the structure of leaf so you have all seen the leaf is green color part normally the leaf will be a green flat expanded structure seen on the leaves so the leaf what are the part of a leaf it has a stalk it has a stalk from the stalk only the leaf arises so what is the stalk of a leaf called it is called petiole the leaf stalk of a leaf is called petiole and next the lamina so what is lamina the flattened part of a leaf you can see the widened part of a leaf which is green in color so that part of a leaf is called lamina next is a mid vein or mid rib 
so the center part of a mid vein which is otherwise called as a mid rib are you clear children so next will be the leaf base so what is a leaf base it is a portion connected to the node so i said in the node the leaf arises so the place of attachment of the leaf to the node is called as a leaf base are you clear next is the stipule so what is a stipule stipules are the lateral growth of a bud next we'll move on to the function of leaf so what are the function of leaf so the function of leaf the main function of leaf is the preparation of food by the process of photosynthesis so um, the process of photosynthesis is mainly done in the leaf next is it helps in respiration and helps to carry out the transpiration so what is respiration it is nothing but the exchange of gases respiration is nothing but the exchange of gases and transpiration is removal of excess of water from the leaf so that is called as transpiration so these three are the functions of the leaf are you clear next we'll move on to the new topic habitat so what is this habitat habitat is actually the dwelling place of an organism what is a dwelling place the place where a particular organism lives is called as a habitat so we have two types of habitat one is aquatic habitat and the terrestrial habitat so what is habitat actually it is a place where an organism lives or the dwelling place of an organism is called as a habitat so we have two types of habitat aquatic habitat and the terrestrial habitat are you clear children next we'll see the types of habitat so habitat as i said we have two types terrestrial habitat and aquatic habitat let us see the types of terrestrial habitat so terrestrial habitat is divided into three types one is desert the second one grassland the third one is mountains so these three are the types of terrestrial habitat so what is this terrestrial habitat terrestrial means actually the landforms so we have different landforms on our earth like desert grassland and mountains and next is the aquatic habitat so basically we have two different types of aquatic habitat one is the marine habitat the other one is the fresh water habitat so we have two different types of habitat that is marine and the fresh water habitat so let us move on to the aquatic habitat so what is aquatic habitat it includes the area that are permanently covered by water so the place where the water is permanently or temporarily covered by water is called as the aquatic habitat so under aquatic habitat we have two different types they are the fresh water habitat and the marine habitat so what is a fresh water habitat the fresh water forms or river lake ponds etc or the fresh water which comes under fresh water habitat marine habitat is a marine system the ocean which comes under the marine habitat so this is a fresh and the marine habitat are you clear now let us move on to the fresh water habitat so fresh water habitat includes the river the lake and the pond what are the fresh water includes the river the lake and the pond are you clear children next we'll see what are the examples of fresh water habitat so we have the fresh water habitat like the organisms which lives in water the plants which lives in water water plants we call it as water plants example lotus water hyacinth and 
water lily so you can see these aquatic plants they are provided with some special adaptations called air chambers you can see in the stem of the lotus they are provided with lot of air chambers which helps the plant to float are you clear so that is why the water plants normally float and some plants may be submerged but they are provided with lot of air chambers next we will move on to the marine habitat so what is this marine habitat it's nothing but the ocean so marine habitat is that ocean which covers more than 70% of our earth surface so ocean covers more than 70% of our earth surface so now we'll see the examples of organisms which live in the marine they are the marine algae sea grass marsh grass and the phytoplankton so these are the examples you can see marine algae sea grass algae we have different types red algae blue green algae brown algae so we have different types of algae based on their pigments present in them and phytoplankton what are these phytoplankton or not nothing but the plants which are seen in the water that is phytoplankton or the tiny plants which are the water based are you clear children so that's all we come to the end of the session we'll continue the next part third part in our next video thank you children